Okay, I have Mr. Decker, Miss Felton, Mr. Sokolowski, Alex, and John, Mr. Staberski. So we have everybody? Okay, thank you. Okay, I believe it's uh, seven, it's seven o'clock and we're gonna open a meeting. Uh, any new business by anybody by chance? Any comments? Okay, we're gonna open the meeting. Um, Anna Colo has filed an application to appeal the decision of the building commissioner dated November 25th, 2019 for the property located at one steam mill road, wherein the commissioner <clears throat> denied the petitioner a building permit for the reconstruction of a single family residence loca located on one steam mill road based on his determination that the lot was a non-conforming to frontage and area. Okay, um, I guess we would like a comment from Ms. Colo or your representative. Yes, Mr. Chairman, my name is Don Dubendorf. I'm an attorney in Williamstown and I'm here on behalf of Ms. Colo. Uh, what we have here is a non-conforming lot, uh, been there for a long time uh, and it, it has uh, a, a building on it that has served as a single family uh, dwelling unit. The dwelling has been on the, that parcel since uh, 1930. So some 90 years. Uh, Ms. Colo looks to uh, tear down the existing dwelling and rebuild on site, a new dwelling on site. The existing dwelling is conforming to all of the dimensional requirements of the bylaw. And the new proposed dwelling also complies with the setbacks and the rest with, with respect to the bylaws dimensional requirements. The only status of, of the reason we're here and the reason in fact why the building inspector issued his decision and we're not, we're, we're, we're we're, uh, we understand why he issued this decision is because the lot is non-conforming as to frontage and area. Uh, this comes under provisions of our bylaw, but more importantly under provisions of uh, 40A section six, which is the zoning act. Uh, the zoning act carves out special treatment for one and two family dwellings. And uh, most recently, uh, the appeals court in May of this year gave, I've been doing this for a while, 40 some years, uh, gave the most lucid and clear uh, set of directions with respect to understanding the uh, protections under section six for one and two family dwelling uses. And two things are clear here. One, the building, uh, the existing building is not non-conforming because of the non-conforming nature of the lot. And the building that is proposed will not be non-conforming and not compliant with the bylaw because of the non-conforming nature of the lot. The lot is protected. It is non-conforming. It's protected by section six. And the rights of Ms. Colo to rebuild on site is also a protected right. And the way it works is as follows. If I go from non-conforming structure to a reconstructed building, new non-conforming or a new conforming structure, I get a building permit. If I extend an existing structural or building non-conformity, I require a special permit. And if I create a new non-conformity, i.e. I go closer to a lot line, or I, I uh, exceed the, the existing coverage requirements that I all already exceed. If I create new non-conformities, I need a variance. In this case, we're not extending a, a, a structural non-conformity because there is none. We're not creating a new non-conformity because the new, new building will comply with all the requirements of the bylaw. The last thing I'd say about that Colo case, it's, again, it's an appeals court case uh, that, that makes it very clear, is that the status of the lot as non-conforming and protected 
does not affect or infect the building itself. In other words, there are two different measurements of what's going on. One's the lot and the other is the building. So what we're asking the board to do tonight is to uh, overturn the decision and direct the uh, building inspector to issue a building permit on the basis of his zoning determination. He's got, of course, determined that all other uh, requirements of the building code, et cetera, are satisfied. But only the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals can give us the relief we're looking for here tonight. Okay, we have any members have any questions? Uh, please remember, uh, state your name for the record so that we can um, record this in our for our scribe. Uh, Mr. Sokolowski? I, I can't hear Good evening, Councillor. Yeah, sorry, I, I had to unmute there. Uh, Adam Sokolowski for the record. Uh, when was the ruling on this case? How recent is it? It was May of 20 uh, oh, this well, year. It's, and well, it's, it's been, good. I must tell you something, it, it, it isn't brand new. There have been a series of cases that have looked at aspects of this, but this is the first case in a long time that revisits these issues of the protection granted to one and two family dwellings under section six that does it in a comprehensive fashion. Because it had, interestingly enough, it's it's had all of all of the issues uh, were presented in the case. It was a it was a ZBA in Gloucester that uh, 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 Comstock was one of the parties, and the ZBA in Gloucester was the other. So it was brand. It was the new case that I'm referring to. But that was that was the case before that. It was just I refer to that because it's so clear and so uh, broad in its. Uh, assembly of the existing authority. All right. Well, it sounds good. I mean, um, it, sa it sounds fine to me that I would uh, overrule the building inspector's decision on this based on that uh, that new case and, and the has changed, but it makes me feel bad for the folks that we saw last time. Uh, I mean, I abstained on that issue there because, um, well, you know, this information uh, of this new case is, is valuable pertaining to these situations. That's all I have. Anyone else have comments? Well, uh, Bob, Bob, uh, Walden, I'm the Bob building Walden, inspector. the building, building commissioner. I, I'm happy to learn, you know, to that this case has come forth, the, just to make Adam feel better. The last one was also a non-conforming structure because it was within four feet of the property line. So that, I mean, I wouldn't feel too terrible about that, that that was a non-conforming structure on a non-conforming lot. And that's a, that's a different case that we have here. Mr. Mr. Dubendor, please, please give us your name again, oh, please. Thank forgive you. me, sir. I apologize for that. Again, it's Don Dubendor. Uh, that's the, because it was a non-conforming structure. That's different from our facts here. We have a conforming building and propose a conforming building. Okay, thank you. Uh, anyone else questions? I think it sounds very reasonable. Oh, uh, John, remember name, please. John Staberski here. Uh, you know, I, I, I think that case is on point and applies to this situation. And I think it's appropriate that we uh, allow the petitioners uh, uh, allow the petition. Okay. Any other comments by anyone? Uh, Kathy. Kathy Felton, I just want to thank Ms. Colo for uh, bringing this to our attention and all the information with her lawyer, because I think this will be helpful with some of our decision making moving forward. Okay, thank you. Uh, do I have a motion to close discussion? So moved. Second. Okay, seconded. So um, I believe we have to take a vote on that. Do you, do you Mr. Dubendorf, while he's uh, doing the roster, do you have a site on that case? Yes, I do. It's, uh, uh, let me get it for you. Okay. It's, uh, it's, it's Comstock, C-O-M-S-T-O-C-K versus the ZBA of Gloucester. Let me give you the, the site for you. Uh, it is uh, 98 Mass App 168. 
Thank you. And the date on that is May 6th, 2020. Okay, thank you so much. Um, let's uh, take our vote to close discussion. Um, Ms. Felton? Yes, I vote to close the discussion. Mr. Decker? I vote to, this, to, to close. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Staberski? Yes. Uh, Mr. Sokolowski? Yes, we can close discussion. And. Uh, Alex, I want to. Alex is, I, I concur. So it's a unanimous decision to uh, close. Actually, we don't need Alex to vote. Okay, I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. Okay. That's, that's All right. What I thought. So do I do I have another motion now to um, accept? I just a motion by one, I just have one question, Bernie, Bob Decker. Yes. I, I have a question. Is there anybody on who's opposed? Oh, a butters or anybody else? Yes. Nobody has said anything. Okay. I just yeah. want to make sure we and put we it in the record. Up. Okay. Thank you, Bob. Motion. I, I move that we award the special permit. Okay. Do I have a second? Seconded, Adam. Uh, Mr. Dubendorf, do you have a, uh, uh, is there a better warning you would like? Yes, I, I think I think you should vote to overturn the decision of the building inspector. Okay, I, I, I yeah. Dated eleven twenty five nineteen. So okay. I, I move that we I withdraw that motion and move that we overturn the the building inspector's denial of the building permit of the okay, so. cited by Mr. Dubendorf, Attorney Dubendorf. Seconded, Adam. Okay, thank you. So what we're voting on is to over to, uh, to vote to overturn the um, building inspector, his decision to uh, deny a permit. Is that good enough wording for everybody? Is it okay. the building inspector or the building inspector? Well, uh, Bernie, no. would you like my 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 motion? Yeah, go ahead, that? John. Well, I move that uh, Deerfield ZBA overturn. It's building inspectors denial of the uh, building permit. Okay. Vote to overturn the um, building inspectors denial of this application. Does that sound good enough? Of the building permit. Yeah. Oh, building permit. I'm sorry. He's the commissioner. He's, He's the commissioner. commissioner. Yes, because he's the zoning enforcement officer. Okay, so say the commissioners rather than the building inspector, I'd move that we substitute commissioner for building inspector. Yes, please. Thank you. Okay. All right. Now we got that wording straightened out. All right. Let's take a let's take a vote. Um, let's start, uh, Miss Felton. Now we're voting a yes means we're going to overturn the building inspectors. Um, we're going to we're going to overturn what he's done. That's what it comes down to simply. All right. So a yes vote means we're going to overturn Bob Walden's um, denial. Correct. Okay. So we, we're looking for a yes or no vote. Okay. Kathy. Yes. Uh, Mr. Decker. Yes. Mr. Taberski. Yes. Uh, Mr. Sokolowski? Yes. And I vote yes also. Okay, thank you. So um, we'll draw that up and send it out to you. Bernie, I have one question. What, uh, was, Mr. It, what yes. was the date of the denial from the, the building commissioner? I believe it was 1125, Mr. Decker. Uh, that's why I heard, but there was a, all right. I just want to make sure we got the right date. Okay, yes. thank you. It, it was denied at 11 25. Okay, just want to make sure we got the right date. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I guess we're all set. Thank you, everybody, for your patience. Thank you very much, Mr. Yep. Chairman of the Board. I appreciate your time. All right. Um,
Next um, applicant is for Aromatic Fillers has filed an application for a special permit for the property. Oh, here we go with fog and glasses. Property located at the 253 Green, at Greenfield, 253 Greenfield Road to utilize the existing building for a new client showroom design and development of new products, testing, light manufacturing of scented products, which include candles, reed diffusers, hand soaps, and sanitizers. Is that a correct description of what we're looking at? Who, who are the people going to re represent yes. us here? Hi, I'm Christy Bodie, and I'm the attorney for the applicant. Okay, thank uh, you. Tony. Mr. Mr. Sadowski? Yes. Uh, I uh, need to recuse myself from this matter uh, because of a conflict. So okay. I know thank Mr. Kirchenreiter is here, and I'm sure he can fill my tiny shoes. Okay, so let's... Thanks. Right. Have a good night, John. Nice to see you again. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Um, let me, so let me take a roll of that then. Um, so we get this right. <clears throat> Mr. Decker is present. Ms. Felton is present. <coughs> Mr. Sokolowski is present. I am present. Alex is present. Um, John, you want to be listed as absent or just not? No, I, you should, you should list me as recused. Okay. On this, on this matter. And I will leave the meeting as soon as this formality is done. Okay. So John has recused himself. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, the attorney representing the petitioner uh, did some legal work for me a number of years ago. I need to disclose that. Okay. Um, I, I guess procedure on that is, is there going to be anyone that's going to question this, um, that he has been done work for? Can I ask who he is? I'm only seeing a telephone number. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. Uh, this is Ms. Mr. Decker. Would you repeat that, please? Yes. I, I think this attorney represented me in a civil service appeal uh, 17, 18 years ago. I think it was that long ago. Yes. I remember. Okay. So I, I need to close that. I think. Uh, yeah. I, well, thank you, Bob. Um, does anybody have a question or is uncomfortable with that? If Bob is okay with it, then I, I think it's okay, okay with me. Okay. Uh, Kathy. Let's close it. No problem. Uh, uh, Adam. I don't have an issue with it. It's... Okay. So we've got our, so we have our five, we have our five voting members. Um, uh, the attorney would like to, are you gonna present something for us or? I'm actually gonna turn the presentation over to Tony Wonseski. He prepared the application and he's most knowledgeable about it. Um, okay, thank you. Um, when we go, again, go through this, <coughs> Please state your name because somebody might be listening uh, just on the, uh, the audio part of this. And we also need to record this for our scribe for the minutes of our meeting. So please state your name when you, if you speak. Uh, try to recognize through the board, please, so we, we don't get too bottled up. I don't think there's going to be much of a problem tonight, but I ask that people um, just take a break and get recognized before they speak so we're not speaking over each other. Okay, I'm sorry. Is it Mike? Can I say one thing, Bernie? Yes. So I muted somebody that's on the call, like phoning in. If they want to unmute themselves or mute themselves, it's star six on the phone. And it's star nine to raise your hand to make a comment. So okay. um, because I just muted them because there was static. Okay. Yeah. Are they are back? We, are we ready to start? Um. I believe we are. Is, okay. it, no, is, is it Mike or Tony? No, this well, is Tony. This is Tony Wonseski. I'm civil engineer with SVE Associates and have been working with Christy and uh, Todd on this. Um, we had to go for site plan review and, and did that on Tuesday through the planning board. And we're here this evening under section 5300 requesting a special permit um, 
because of section 2200 of the by bylaw, which has to do with square footage and also um, use. Uh, as mentioned in the um, uh, application and preamble, um, there will be some research innovation design work, which may trigger that portion of 2200 for use. So <clears throat> on behalf of aromatic fillers, um, we're, we're requesting that special permit to allow them to lease the existing vacant building at 253 Greenfield Road. And Jennifer, I'm not sure if you can bring the site plan up. That might be helpful for people that can view it on the line. Um, you know, they can see uh, what, uh, what it looks like. Um, there's very little site improvements with this. Um, with this proposal because the building is, is meets the requirements and that uh, Todd needs for his business. Um, Aromatic Fillers headquarters is in Greenfield, everybody knows, and there are a couple of other buildings that he utilizes in Greenfield. His goal is to uh, move out of the two satellite buildings in Greenfield and consolidate his efforts from those two buildings in this building. Um, as you know, 253 Greenfield was formerly the Volvo and Saab dealership, and it's now vacant. The property is owned by um, Mr. Bedard, Michael Bedard, and it's about 3.7 acres in size. Um, the building gross footage is, uh, by the assessor's card, is 15,816 square feet. Um, portion of the property is... Um, is left natural because it's uh, it's encumbered with wetland resources. So, um, you know, although it's a fairly large lot, not all of that lot is used because of those wetland resources. Um, because we're not doing any real site improvements, we did not go out and survey this, but we've compiled this site plan to let everybody see what the site does look like. So you'll see the aerial photograph that we're using here was back when the Volvo dealership was active. That's why you have all of those cars in that um, being shown. There are two curb cuts that access the property. And uh, we will have our two dumpsters out and back. So they'll be screened from five and 10 uh, or Greenfield Road. There's a 10 yard recyclable bin and a 10 yard um, uh, waste bin. Uh, one of the improvements that's going to be uh, as proposed is a gate right at the entrance coming in. You'll see right there, we're gonna put a gate in and extend it over to the property line. It'll be black vinyl, so it'll match up with our southerly abutter, the storage place. So it'll look very similar to that. And um, we just wanna off, off hours restrict any vehicle traffic that can get behind the building. Right now you can get back there. It's fairly dark, uh, except for overflow lights from the storage place. We are not proposing any lighting. There's two flood lighting off existing lights that front, uh, you know, that light the front portion of the um, uh, property and uh, that's adequate for, um, for their business. The other minor site improvement that we'll do in our application, you'll notice that from time to time, the business has three to four uh, potential customers, new customers or repeat customers come to the facility um, and look at either new products or they design new stuff to, to meet their demand. So with that case, we are um, proposing to put two uh, ADA spaces and signage in front of what used to be the Saab portion of the dealership because it's um, fairly flat there and there is an existing ramp that gets you up into the, the front door of that portion of the facility. Um, those are the only site improvements that are proposed. There's more than adequate parking for Todd's use. Um, they are projecting anywhere from 12 to 15 employees would be at this facility. Um, and then there could be uh, one or two uh, box trucks, 26 foot wide box trucks that would shuttle um, product um, between the Greenfield headquarters and this facility. So the tr uh, traffic impacts um, to Greenfield Road are going to be significantly less than what was experienced from an auto dealership. That's just, uh, you know, auto dealerships have a pretty good um, active ADT use. Um, and this would probably generate maybe with four customers uh, and, um, and the employees about 70 trips per day. So it's, and that's if they, all the employees went out for lunch. So it's um, a much less traffic impact. 
Um, Christy has reached out to uh, Jeff Ely, or Jay Ely, I'm sorry, at MassDOT to see if we had to get a permit for this. And they were just requesting a letter from us stating um, the change in use, and they were fine with that. Um, the property is served by municipal water. Um, South Deerfield Water District supplies water to the building. And there's an on-site septic in the lawn area on the north side of the building, which I believe was updated recently. Um, we obtained the septic plan from Mr. Kalaszewski just to show the location of that on the site. Uh, the business typically operates between seven and four, Monday through Friday. Uh, in the fall time seasonally, there is there is a potential for some Saturday um, operational hours um, just because it's the season. Um, and uh, this, this is in the commercial two zone, just so you know that. And um, the map number is for this assessor's map is 122 and it's a lot four. And um, I think that's it from a site plan review. Um, Todd, the CEO, he can talk a little bit more about the business for you, uh, introduce you to that type of the work that they do. And, um, and then we can, take any questions that the board or public may have. Thank you very much. Todd? Uh, good evening, my name is Todd Green um, from Aromatic Fillers. So like Tony mentioned, we operate um, um, our business in our main business in Greenfield where we do mass production on Haywood Street and the two satellite buildings, just like he described. Um, so what we're planning to move down there is actually have a much more beautiful building for our clients. Um, we don't have a we don't have retail clients that walk in the door. It's not like that. Everything we make is for private label and is sold across the country and the world. Um, so uh, this opportunity comes up to allow us to get into one location that has a nice space that's very presentable and easy access from the highway for our clients to visit. They can see a snapshot of everything we do in Haywood Street in Greenfield, but on a much smaller scale um, in a nice location. Uh, the, the piece that I think uh, we talked about uh, in the preamble, it says all the different um, activities that we would be doing there on a small scale. And the piece that maybe- I just got it on my computer. I didn't hear what that comment was. Go ahead, I just muted her. Oh, okay. Um, so the it might be the comment when I was asked to give a description about the new products and the testing and things like that. It isn't a scientific lab or anything where we're um, doing anything with hazardous waste or creating hazardous waste or doing anything um, that might be perceived like that. It's really um, a test kitchen. So if some if we have a client that um, you know they want to look at a vessel like this and we want to make small samples, we're not going to put it on a giant line. We'll make it in a in a small kitchen environment. And that's that's that part of the business that will happen there. Um, and just one segment and that would happen in what used to be like the parts room and in, in behind the dealership. The showrooms are going to be a conference room and, a, and um, um, uh, like a display. So you'd either be, you'd have your meeting there, you'd have a display. And in the back where they repaired the cars, um, that's where we would store some material and we will have like a small um, uh, setup for doing um, boutique real small production. So um, like when it's a first run, somebody has something they're buying 300 units, um, they're gonna come and we'd be able to do it there. And the idea is they see everything under one roof um, and they don't have to come to my very ugly building in Greenfield, which is an old concrete GTD building um, that's about a hundred years old. So that's the gist of it. Thank you. And I can answer any questions. Uh, if you, you know just a little bit more about our business, I've been in the candle business since the 91. I worked for Yankee and I've worked for five other large um, manufacturers across the country, came back here. Um, our business is a six-year-old profitable, profitable business. I cannot hear the chairman. Hold on, well. 
We can hear you now, Bernie. All right. I don't know what's going on here. I'm not surprised. Can you hear me now, Mr. Green? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, questions by any of the board members? Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Decker. Um, how many square feet are going to be devoted to the manufacturing? Um, is it a couple hundred square feet or, or is it a thousand square feet or is it 15,000 square feet? It's um, 2,000, about 2,000. Not, not to exceed 2,000. I don't want to keep in, but I want to know. I didn't hear what the comment was. I don't want to hem you in, but is it 2,000 square feet would be the max probably? I don't know the exact measurement, but it's the very back repair bay. It's le it's about, uh, le even if we said it's a third of the entire building. So even if it was 5,000, that would be sufficient. Okay. It's, it's mostly for uh, the term in the military is dog and pony show. You have everybody come and they can see a little bit of everything. Um, and we have it in one nice location. Our building in Greenfield is 40,000 square feet where we actually have full production lines. My other question is right now there's a grandfather use in that building for automobile sales. Uh, if, in my opinion, if the board votes to grant a change of use, that grandfather use will disappear, I think. I don't know if the owner of the building realizes that or not, but I just want to make make that known that they would probably lose that in my opinion, so. If I can speak up a little bit, um, this, one of the reasons for- Name, please. Uh, Christy Bodine, uh, attorney for the applicant, uh, Mr. Sadowski. Thank you. Um, Mr. Decker, one of the reasons that we applied for a special permit was because the use as an automobile dealership and service center predates zoning. So there has never been a special permit issued for this for this property ever, ever in, the, in history. Um, so that was one of the reasons that one was required. And the, uh, the owner of the building understands that this is in fact a change of use and it won't automatically revert back to a car dealership. All right, as long as I understand it, you know. Yeah. That's my interpretation. Okay. Uh, other other questions by any board members? Okay, Ms. Mr. Waldron, would you like to uh, make any comments? Are you comfortable with this or? Yeah, Bob Walden, Building Commissioner. I have no objections to this at all. I mean, I think it'd be a great use of the building. Okay, thank you. Um, what's next? Are there are there any in anyone in? <coughs> Here in opposition to this project, do we have anybody uh, uh, abutters who would like to speak to this uh, project? Jennifer, are we hearing anybody? Nope, nobody says anything. Okay, so I, I think our next step is we have to look at the um, six criteria, I believe, Mr. Decker. We have to look at the six criteria, 51, 5321, 5322, 5323, 24, 25, and 26. Everybody have those available uh, available to look at? Okay, I will read them and we'll go through them one at a time. And if you have comments, um, 5321, the social, economic, or community needs which are served by the proposal. Comments or questions? I take it that there's no problem. No one has a, any issues with all these. No, I. I mean, Adam Sekulowski. Yes. I feel as though that it's an existing building with no new construction besides a gate. And they're bringing jobs to the community. Uh, potentially, you know, the spillover effect from clients coming to the community is an additional benefit where you have other people in business that may um, stay here at our hotels, uh, visit historic Deerfield, um, visit, uh, you know, stay at the Red Roof Inn, uh, go to um, any one of our attra attractions. So I think that's, that's positive. It's, it's uh, much more positive. I think it's a positive and better use and less detrimental than a car dealership. Um, you know, so that's, that's my, Stance on Anyone that. else for comments? 
I, Adam, I also concur. I think it's it's a environment, a much safer situation, better use of it. Um, and the economic effects, I think, which we'll discuss later, but I think are, are good that we're getting people in town. When most places are losing businesses, we're able to gain businesses. And that's, a, to me, is a real plus for our community. Okay. Uh, 5322, traffic flow, safety, including parking and loading. Anyone have any questions or comments? Uh, my comment is I think we're going to be fine. I think we're going to have less traffic. Uh, there's certainly enough of parking and loading because it was a car dealership. So they're, they're well equipped <clears throat> for what I think, from what I can tell, you're going to be, you're going to be doing there. So I think that's, a, that really fits the bill for what you're looking for. Anyone, anyone else comments? Advocacy of utilities and public services, 5323 comments. Adam, I mean, Alex. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I was uh, oh, scratching, okay. um, but I, I guess I'll, I'll just make a general statement. I think um, I think the project is uh, definitely the uh, benefits outweigh the I guess, non-existent detriments from what I can hear and from what I can see. Um, there's not going to be. Um, um, there's not going to be the, you know, Yankee Candle smell for 50 miles. Um, it, I, I, don't, I don't think that's the case. Um, Do you want me to address that? Sure. Aromatic fillers. So um, it shouldn't um, be anything uh, like historically um, that was um, you'd smell from Yankee Candle. Uh, number one, it's the, first of all, volume. Um, I, when I was working, I ran the jar department, we would run 120,000 candles a day. We're talking about less than a thousand potentially oh. and do it. But we also, uh, like I explained to the, um, the previous zoom call, we use, um, a little bit newer technology called, um, cougar fillers and they are, um, they mix on the fly. So we don't have big tanks that have all the ingredients churning and then it's going into the atmosphere. The ingredients stay separate and they come together at the nozzle when they're, they're dispensed. So it's about 15 <laughs> minutes until it skims over. And that's, um, uh, it contains that, uh, it contains the odor and keeps it um, left just churning out into the atmosphere. Um, so it's a better tech, it's about 10 year old technology, but of course it's too hard. Um, I don't have anything negative to say about Yankee Candle. Obviously I'm a, I'm a mocker or whatever, but they, um, they're too big of a cruise ship to change to the new style. They have a lot of money invested in the method that they use. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments? Um, <laughs> please bear with my cough. 5324, neighborhood characteristics and social structures. Comments? The only change is a, a chain link fence. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't think you're going to change the characteristics much. I think it might improve a little bit with not having a bunch of cars parked out there. Though I'll, I know there's some people that owned uh, Volvos and Sobs that are upset that they're not here anymore. But uh, I, I think I think it fits the neighborhood pretty well. It's been there for a while, so uh, we're not really changing anything. Bernie. I, yes, and I think that it's mindful that the gate matches the neighbors, and it'll protect the back of the property from activity that is unrelated to business in the evenings. Okay, thank you. That was Kathy Felton. Okay, impact right. on the natural environment. Third, fifty-three twenty-five. Comments. It shouldn't have any effect. Just not changing the building or the or the uh, driveways or anything else other than the gate. Okay, anyone else? I, I concur with Mr. Decker. The last one, 5326, potential physical impact, including impacts on town services, tax base and employment. Comments, questions? It should provide some additional jobs. Oh, and, that's uh, Mr. Decker, yes, Mr. Mr. Decker. Yeah, 
career opportunities, additional jobs. So it's a positive. I agree. I concur. It's a it's a real positive thing we got done. Like I said, we got people moving to town that want to do business in town, which is um, going to improve our tax base. Uh, when every people are losing, we're we're gaining, and that's a that's a real plus for us. Any other comments? Okay. <coughs> um, since we have no one opposed, um, any closing comments by uh, Tony or um, who's the other person we had? Your your lawyer, your counsel, Christy. Christy, comments, uh, Christy. I would I would just note um, just for the convenience of the board that the uh, the application packet. Um, does directly address on, on page 16 of the packet, does directly address comments on the uh, special permit criteria. So if you wanted to try to use that as a framework for your decision, um, Mr. Mr. Wanteski's already, already put that in. I do not see it. It's, it's pretty far towards the back of the application packet. Obviously, you're free to do whatever you want with the decision. I cannot find it. Okay. Yes. I don't know if you have the, the, the packet that they see the, with you because that's on my desk. It wasn't what I gave you, but um, there you go. I have it in the office and I can send it to you tomorrow. Okay. Um, Are you um, lining the parking lot? Worry, this is Todd Green. We plan, as Tony mentioned, to line the ADA spaces, um, but otherwise we wouldn't need to do it or w weren't planning on doing it. I guess if, if there were more folks, eventually more than the dozen or so people, we could do it if we needed to, but everybody should be parking on that north parking lot. Nothing should be parking in front or by the, the south side where the chain is. Um, and I didn't see, um, did you have a sign? Um, so what we're doing about the sign is there are two existing ones on the north side to the Saab dealer. They had a Scania for Saab and this word Saab. I'm replacing the exact fascia with just our logo, which says aromatic. And then the square sign that said uh, Scania, it's going to be the logo for the National Candle Association that we're a member of it. I tried to just use the same thing and come up with a good plan so it looks nice. And I guess my final comment is, um, like we do in Greenfield, we will, we're, we're a good neighbor, we're considerate of our neighbors, we'll try to improve the property more than, there shouldn't be anything detrimental happening there. And I didn't remember if you said this at the planning board, you're not taking down or are you adding more trees or? No, one of the, I think one of the neighbors or somebody from the community said it would be nice if you planted some trees. And I took a look at it today and I don't know if that can be done in that in the tree belts, but you know, I'm not opposed to it. I don't want to be on the hook to do it before I even move in, but um, I think you could probably put like crab apple trees or some small tree on the tree belt. It, that's dependent on whether it's allowed. I don't know what DOT or the town would say, but not opposed to it. Yeah, we probably um, once I would recommend to Todd once we he gets in and starts operating and and really sees uh, the demand for parking in that then at that point maybe there could be some um, reduction in the existing asphalt areas where some additional landscaping could be provided. Um, you know, you, you're probably not going to do anything in the right of way with five and ten because that's you know state area plus you want to have good visibility and sight distance um but along the sides um i'm thinking on the north north side um mm -hmm. there might be an opportunity to do some some stuff there but um, um we have plenty of room for snow storage you know with 15 people i mean that lot probably holds 100 cars and um we're gonna have 15 you know at the most and then another four if you have uh, potential new customers or whatever coming by um i mean 20 parking spaces maybe at the most is really at the need right now 
in the rare occasion, this is Todd Green again, in the rare occasion, we have uh, 72 employees. If we had everybody go there, we still wouldn't have more vehicles than were there when it was a dealership. Yeah, I wasn't concerned about that. I was just like, right. if it was how, how mostly what it was, look what it looks like, but you know, yeah. that's, yeah. Okay, do I have a motion to close discussion? Moved. Oh, do I have a second? Seconded, second. Adam. Okay. Um, vote to close discussion. Ms. Felton. Yes. Mr. Decker. Yes. Mr. Sokolowski. Yes. Uh, and Alex. Yes. And I vote. So it's unanimous to close discussion. Um, I think what we'll do is, if the attorney feels comfortable, I'm going to read each one. And we're going to just take a straw vote of what that's going to be if we agree that um, each one of these topics has been covered and we feel comfortable with those. Will that be all right with you, Christy? That's fine. Yes, okay. thank you. Okay. So I'm going to go through them. And uh, if you vote yes or no, please uh, make your uh, opinion, <coughs> opinion we're not uh, made. And then we're going to take a final vote on um, accepting it. Uh, 53, Mr. Decker, yes. Question. Question. Yeah, the bylaw requires us to to say that it meets all the criteria. Okay, uh, do you really want to go through and and pick these off one by one? Uh, because if you do go through and pick these off one by one, and one of them comes up to the negative, uh, you might uh, might scuttle the whole uh, petition. Okay, I don't I don't I don't perceive we've got any negatives here. But um, it, it... That, that, the, the, you didn't do anything, Bernie. That computer is just going to make that noise. Okay. Um, I just felt that we, you know, cover each one so that it's bulletproof. But if, if Mr. Decker, we want to do it as a whole thing that we accept it with no, um, no findings of negatives, then we can do it that way. But I'm leaving it up to you, attorney, that you're, you're the expert in these areas much more than I am. Well, I think during the discussion portion on the record, you all agreed that the criteria had been met. So okay. I don't see it. I don't see that you need to go back through the criteria individually again. Again, it's your it, you're the zoning board, and it's your. Uh, Mr. Scott, I'm going to make a motion, if you'd like, Adam. Yes. I make a motion that we vote to approve the special permit. Okay. Do I have a second? Yes. Okay. So we have, we have we have a, a motion to accept it. Now we're going to take the formal vote, please. We had a discussion. After you have a second, you have discussion. Question I oh, have sorry. is, should we not uh, refer this to council to draw the, draw the permit? Because it, it, there's all kinds of things that are outlined in the petitioner's thing, or we can just encompass, incorporate what he says in his presentation. It's up to you. Well, I felt comfortable with this presentation, but that's just me. I, th I thought he covered everything. Um, but what I'm trying to say is, do we, do we want to turn around and refer back to, the, to his application? And uh, at, type there. Yes, yeah. Mr. S Mr. Sokolowski. Well, I think uh, Mr. Decker has a point that, although on face value, uh, this uh, these folks are, you know, 100% on the up and up, uh, we should incorporate their uh, application um, in the approval that, you know, they are going to do the things that they said, like matching the fence and, you know, are making the fence similar to the neighbor's fence and, you know, not change the lighting and all that, not just give a, a blanket a special permit. So I don't know if we should uh, have that, that document that was shown um, incorporated as the conditions of it or, we vote basically that we're going to agree to it or straw vote that we could agree to it and have Mr. Costa review it and then do the formal vote um, in, in at our next meeting. Okay. Uh, it's it's uh, totally up to what the board decides. I'm comfortable with either one. I, 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 I kind of trust them. They're going to do that, but uh, we've, I guess. Well, it might not be them down the road. That's the right, thing. That, right. Okay. Okay. So you can condition the permit. If you wanted to, you could condition the permit as as not as being reviewable if there's a change mm -hmm. of ownership. That's that's another well, that's, way to do it. Yeah. 
That's typical, actually. Oh, right. that yeah. If there was a change in use and would trigger, they would have to come back. That new owner mm -hmm. would have to come back for a special permit. See, the special permits typically go with the oh. applicant, not with the property, in my opinion. Christy, is that typically the way it is? Mm -hmm. It's, it, it varies from community to community. Um, Deerfield historically has not done that. Um, a lot of other towns do. There's no reason Deerfield couldn't impose such a condition. It might make it easier than that you could vote the, you could sort of vote the permit as per the contents of the application and then have a written decision that incorporates the findings that you already discussed. And then have a condition of the permit being that the permit would, e would either have to be reviewed or would even potentially expire on a change of use or change of ownership. Well, the ownership, the ownership, Mr. The, Mr. Mr. Decker, please identify yourself. And I, I'm getting background noise. Please, I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, Bob Decker. The thing is, the owner of the real estate is different than the owner, than the petitioner for this change. Okay, so that they're not the same. So just to be cognizant of that, we're, the board is gonna vote to grant a permit for this use, but it's gonna be just issued to the, the petitioner. It's not being issued to the people that own the real estate. That's correct. So. Do I get the feeling we wanna have our council drop we straw poll that this is what we want, but have uh, our attorney draw up a formal um, acceptance with con the conditions? I think so. Okay, do I have a second on that? Mr. Sokolowski. I'll withdraw my motion then. Thank uh, you. And then I'll make a new motion. Okay. That <clears throat> the board uh, vote to accept or, or vote will vote at the next meeting to accept uh, or grant the special permit because we find that the applicant has um, met the criteria set forth in the bylaw and that therefore the uh, we will we will incorporate the um, recommendation of uh, and wording of the applicants council <clears throat> and have it reviewed by our lawyer to include their specific proposal and include that the uh, special permit is granted to this corporation and then, uh, and then it would uh, expire if there was a change in ownership of the uh, occupant of the leasee. Okay, uh, uh, Attorney Bowden, question, comment? Are you asking me to write the special permit decision and conditions i don't understand what you're no. asking to be i don't know why no. you can't vote the permit tonight i don't understand uh, jennifer can you yes <clears throat> um bernie if i may yes jen go ahead so what i would recommend that the board do is say that you are agreeing that this permit is going to be issued with the condition of uh upon change of ownership of the business um, that they need to, that the permit is um, has expired or if there's any changes to their plan of the business this permit is expired and they need to come back to the board and you can just say that and we can have Adam write it up he can listen to this meeting and then it would start its uh, appeal period once this it's been written well you have the time period to have it written and then um, filed with the clerk, and then it starts this appeal period there. I think it. it that sounds mu that's Adam sounds much better to me. I just you know I don't want to uh, hold these folks up at all, but I do want to protect our interests moving forward. Yeah, I, I think that because you've all agreed to everything and you've gone through, we'll write a a, a decision, and just put those conditions. If there's any other conditions that you're thinking of, I think you just state it now um, so that their whole team can hear what you're saying, such as what Kathy said about the fence. So that would be a condition that you're putting here. And you would say, you know, we wanna know what, what the fence is gonna look like. That would be a condition on the permit. Um, 
I think the big one is just upon the change of ownership of the business. But that's, I mean, I, I've seen this many times before, but it's up to you, Chair, whatever you feel comfortable with. And then he would listen to this meeting. I'll tell him what happened and he could write it up for us and for you to review. Okay. Um, does anyone else have any order of conditions they want to put on there? I, Mr. Chairman? Mr. Yes, Mr. Decker. Uh, I just want to have council draw the draw the conditions, et cetera. And if he thinks something that we've missed, bring it back to us. And uh, if it sounds reasonable, we'll incorporate it in the decision when we vote it. I just want to make sure that we're not overlooking something that we should be looking at. And that's why you have council look at things before you sign them. Yes, I agree. We 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 have to be consistent in how we approach these special permits. Does everyone agree with? I think we need to be consistent in how we approach these special permits. Anyone object to that? Okay, so basically we're saying it's okay, but we're going to have our council draw off the conditions, and then what we'll do is we have our next meeting in. January 14th, was it? January 14th, right. So um, we would draw that up and then we'll take our formal vote at that time. Um, could, we have, could we ask our council to uh, carbon copy or send it to the lawyer for the petitioner to make I, sure that there's no problems ahead of time? I agree, I think that would be a very good idea. Ms. Bowden, questions or comments? Um, my question is, Mr. Uh, the, the Air Medic Fillers had anticipated, we filed the application um, as quickly as we possibly could because they were anticipating starting using the building late December, early January. And I'm just wondering, and if you don't vote to approve the use, the question is, can he proceed at his own peril? Um, it sounds like you want the decision written before you vote the permit, that's oftentimes ZBAs will vote the decision and then issue the, you know, issue the permit, issue, issue the written decision later. And it sounds like you want the written decision first before you're gonna vote it. And I, that's not typical in my experience. So that's what, why I'm questioning. Um, you could vote the special permit, but then your written decision doesn't go into effect until it's written, but at least we'd know that you'd approved the permit, you know, pending the, the actual written decision being filed with the town clerk. Does so, that make sense? Does that make sense to you, Jen? It does. But I don't want it. If we make a decision today, this is Alex. Um, if we make a decision today, doesn't that start the 20 day? Um, well, they have 30 no. days to write the decision. Oh, okay. okay is written it gets filed with the clerk and then we get yeah. 20 days that's yeah. right yeah okay and, you know i if if jan and her experience is fine with it i'm fine with it voting it tonight um and i'm also fine i understand they want to get going I, i'm also fine with if we have to meet sooner if that would make people more comfortable i mean i don't know if we give council a week to turn something like this around um i'm fine with voting it and then either way this is kathy yes, yeah I, i'm in agreement with with uh adam and with jen that i would feel comfortable voting going ahead and voting it and then putting the conditions in the statement in place later so we are business friendly and they can start moving with their business. mr decker i just I just want to make sure that we tie up the loose ends legally. You will. Okay. I'm not trying to slow it down. I just want to make sure we do it right. Okay. So I assume we've got a consensus here that we could take a vote tonight on this. Anybody object kind of a, a objecting to that? Okay. Do I have a motion to take a vote on this that we accept um, aromatics? application for 
<coughs> or a special permit on the property located at 253 Greenfield Road to utilize the existing building for a new client showroom design <coughs> and develop a new products, testing, light manufacturing, scent products for which includes candles, diffusers, read diffusers, hand soaps, and sanitizers. And we take, we vote, yes, we are going to vote to accept that. So yes vote means we accept the application for this project. Comments? Are we ready to take a vote? I guess we are. You need a second. I I'll think. second it, Adam. <coughs> okay, thank you. Um, Kathy? Yes. Mr. Decker? Yes. Mr. Sokolowski? Yes. Alex? Yes. And I vote yes, so it's a unanimous decision to grant a special permit um, to aromatic, can I refer to it as aromatic fillers? Is that comfortable for you? Okay. That's thank you. that's fine, yes. Well, we're trying to be as business friendly as we can. We really appreciate that. Yes, thank you very much. Yeah, well, thank you for coming to town and um, being part of our community. I think you'll be a welcome group to us. I, I'm, I'm happy to see that we're uh, utilizing our, our spaces and providing, uh, I'm going to say, income to the town. And that's a kind of a and good jobs, you know? Yeah, and good jobs, I think. And, and you know, I think you'll do fine. I think you'll do fine. I think you presented a good program. Um, and yeah. we'll have that, our attorney draw that up. Is that what we're, we're talking about? Yeah. And then um, when you, I'm not sure if we have to vote on that again. I don't think we have to, do we? Okay, so we'll get, attorney, we'll get that, uh, the audit condition to you. And then if there's any issues, just get back to us. I believe that's how we handle this. I'm a greenhorn in this thing, so I'm. You have to bear with me. Uh, right. Trust Mr. Jen; she Mr. knows what she's doing. <laughs> Mr. 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 Chairman. Yes. It's not. As somebody pointed out last night, it's not an order of conditions. It's conditions. Conditions. Thank you, Mr. Decker. Now, if we get right last night, so I just want to make sure. <laughs> if they were all look easy, right? All right. Uh, do we have any other business, Mr. Chair? Can we get out of here? No, I don't. Do we? Do I have a motion to close? Um, uh, oh, motion. do we have any other business? Yeah, can know. we? Um, can we have everybody review the minutes from the, the not the previous meeting that not yesterday and not the last one, but October and um, September? I don't think we approved those minutes. Um, just so they're not hanging around. We don't have to do it tonight. Just. So we can do that in our next meeting or something. So we have, because I don't think we've approved them. I don't think we have either. I, I think I didn't want to approve them until I'd read them. Okay. <laughs> so, we'll, yes, Ken. Um, for tonight's meeting, I didn't hit record for the first bit. I'm really sorry. So Alex, when you write up the minutes, can you kind of say there was just open discussion and then go from there, because then that would be our, our legal document of the minute. Do my best. Thank you. Well, anyway, uh, everybody have a nice Christmas. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you, you too. Yeah, Mr. Green, thank you for being patient with us, especially with me. This is a, it's a daunting job at times. I'm not a very legal person and just trying to do the best do the best I can. I know I, I'm lucky I got good board members to help me out. Okay, enough said. Let's have a vote to adjourn. Adjourn. Thank you. I was just going to say uh, thank you to everybody for uh, the meeting, and um, ha ha hopefully you have a good holiday. And um, when we are there, you're certainly welcome to visit, so you can see what we do. Well, thank you very much. I'm sure we'll take a look at it. Okay, uh, Jen. Question. No, I was just waving. Okay, in. so what, uh, we have. I have a second to close. Correct. Second. Second. Yes. Okay. 
Um, Kathy second. <laughs> Kathy second. Okay, uh, I vote yes to close the meeting. Ms. Felton? Yes. Yes. Ms. Felton? Yes. Yes. Uh, Mr. Decker? Yes. Mr. Sokolowski? Yes. And <laughs> Alex? Uh, yes. Okay, unanimous decision to close the meeting. Thank you. We won't see each other until um, June Next 14th, July. January 14th. <laughs> Jeez. Some rest, Bernie. Uh, thank you, gentlemen, for being so patient tonight.